James. Today is Wednesday of the fourth week of Easter, and we celebrate the memorial of St. Fidelis of Sigmaringen, priest and martyr. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 653, Word of God, Come Down to Earth. Number 653, Word of God, Come Down to Earth, verse 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. St. Fidelis died in the year 1622 in Switzerland after preaching a rather robust campaign in favor of the faith. We hear in the Acts of the Apostles, the Lord says through the Holy Spirit, single out Saul and Barnabas for the work I have them to do. And so today we're going to be encouraged, of course, to follow the example of fidelity of St. Fidelis. But all of our good intentions don't always turn out to be so good because they're not rooted in God. And so we need to not only want to do good things, but we need to know what is God's will for our lives. And then we'll have the courage and the faith to do it. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in worship. To strengthen us in a holiness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to award the palm of martyrdom to St. Fidelis, as burning with love for you, he propagated the faith. Grant, we pray, through his intercession, that grounded in charity, we may merit to know with him the power of the resurrection of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who is called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So, they, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there, sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light, so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we recall and celebrate the life and martyrdom the martyrdom of St. Fidelis. When he was born, he was born Mark Rey of Sigmaringen, a town in what is now Germany. And I thought, when I looked at this, St. Fidelis of Sigmaringen, you know, and that his name was originally John Rey. That doesn't sound German. You know, but as it turns out, his father was Spanish, so that explains it. He studied law and philosophy at the University of Freiburg and earned a doctorate in law. Before he went to practice law in Alsace, he accompanied some students, and I would imagine that these are rather wealthy, uh, or students from wealthy families, and they were doing the grand tour around Europe, and so he was their mentor, teacher, and chaperone. And apparently, during all those years, and they traveled for years, he spent a lot of his time visiting churches and shrines, often on his knees for hours before the Blessed Sacrament. He found himself constantly being generous to the poor, so here he is with these rich kids on their tour around Europe, and he's doing a lot of praying, visiting shrines and praying, and not forgetting the needs of the poor. Even as a student, while he was studying law and philosophy, he drank no wine and wore a hair shirt. He was known for his modesty and for his charity. As a lawyer, as you might imagine, he dedica dedicated himself to the poor. And as a rule, he went out of his way to not defame or detract from a person's reputation, even if they happen to be an adversary or an opponent. And you can imagine that with this zeal for the poor and his rather lofty high moral standard, it should be easy to see why he became disenchanted with practicing law, as the society of his day, and pretty much like ours today, uh, contradicted much of what he believed in. So, he joined his brother George and became a Capuchin Franciscan friar. And I was wondering while praying over this, surely he must have known he had a vocation. I mean, his brother was a Franciscan, and you see how he was acting. Why didn't he just do this in the first place? 
But it seems as though God needed to have this other element. He had to develop this other aspect of his personality in order to do what was going to follow. And so he took on the name Fidelis, and he was ordained a priest and was sent on a mission to reconvert followers of John Calvin in Switzerland. So the Calvinist movement was big in Switzerland, and he was sent there to preach and, I guess, convert or reconvert people back to the Catholic faith. After his successes with caring for the people and soldiers during an uh, epidemic in Austria, several Calvinists converted. You see, so the thing is, is that he was successful at what he was doing. And as you can see, uh, later on, uh, well, you know, he paid for it. As you know, the old saying, no good deed goes unpunished, okay? So those who had left the church were none too pleased with him bringing people to Catholicism, taking them back from Calvinist church and making them Catholic. What is this, you know? So he started to receive death threats to which he responded. He responded to those death threats by preparing himself for martyrdom. I mean, this is a really holy person. I mean, really think about it. Someone's threatening to kill you and instead of trying to protect himself, he starts to prepare himself for martyrdom. And after apparently a very particularly fervent sermon, he had a vision. He had a vision, it was found there, and I don't know if you've ever seen people in ecstasy. Um, you can see uh, the famous statue of St. Teresa of ecstasy. There's that fixed gaze, you know, they're looking beyond. And so he was in ecstasy. And after that, he began signing his letters. He would sign it P. Fidelis, Pater Fidelis, Prope de Dium Esca Vermium. And I'm sure all of you know exactly what that means in Latin. No, you don't, okay. He is signing it, Father Fidelis, in coming days to be worm food. I'm not making this up, that, that's what he wrote. So under armed protection, Fidelis roused the anger of some Calvinists while he was preaching. The Habsburgs sponsored a preaching mission of his and they sent Austrian troops to protect him. And uh, some people were not too pleased and of course they threatened to kill him. And so he was persuaded by other Catholics to leave with the Austrian troops. But just like St. Paul might have done, what does he do? He decides to go back. So he goes back to finish preaching. You know that famous story in Acts of the Apostles where St. Paul goes out and he's preaching and all that and the, and the people think he's a god and he tells them that he's not a god and all this and then they get into these big riots and people stir up the crowd and they beat him to a pulp. They drag him out of the city and throw him in the garbage dump as he was dead. So his friends and students came to find him he's in the garbage dump and he managed to get up. And what does St. Paul say? I'm going back, I gotta finish what I saw. I mean, you know, like, you know I mean, so this is the kind of thing, you know. It wasn't bad enough to receive death threats. He said, well, you know something, I'm going back. I, I have another point to make. And so, as he decided to go back and finish preaching, he was met by some Calvinist soldiers who demanded that he renounce his faith. You just give up that Catholic business, become Calvin, Calvinist, and you know, it'll be fine. And after that, he said, I am sent to refute not to embrace your heresy. But what do you think happened after that? Well, he was murdered, and his body was mutilated. It was enough to kill him. They had to stab him and chop off his head and his left leg. And they chopped off his left leg because he kept walking around preaching the, you know, the conversion, so they were gonna get even with him like that. Now, after hearing a story such as this, what do you expect me, the preacher, to say? 
You already know what I'm going to say, right? I'm going to encourage you to share yourselves and your talents with the poor and work for justice, right? Right? Yes, of course. But nothing wrong with that. However, our reading from the Acts of the Apostles today, and as I started the Mass, shows us that first, we must be guided by the Holy Spirit. They didn't just decide to do, Saul and Barnabas didn't just say, you know, wouldn't it be great for us to go on this preaching mission? They prayed and they fasted and together with the other prophets and the evangelists, and the Holy Spirit said, separate them out for the work that I would have them to do. It wasn't their idea, it's God's idea. Consider the remarkable conviction behind Jesus saying today, whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. You don't just say that because you studied theology or prayed a few times. Those are the kind of words that come out of somebody who deeply knows God, somebody who has an absolute relationship with God. St. Fidelis lived the way he did out of knowledge and experience of God. The early church grew from people who knew God not about God alone, but had an active, intimate relationship with Jesus. Jesus is speaking from his intimate knowledge and relationship to the Father. How good could our good works actually be if they're not grounded in the true knowledge and love of God? Let us stand to pray. With trust in the Father, who gave us his Son as the light of the world, we bring our needs and our petitions to him. For all in the church who feel called to a religious or priestly vocation, may the Holy Spirit give them courage in responding let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may the Lord guide them in enacting policies that affirm the dignity of all life. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christians that are persecuted for their faith, may the love of Jesus give them fortitude and wisdom in their time of great need. Let us pray to the Lord. For our families and for our loved ones in this community. May the Holy Spirit be our guide in every thought, word, and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For Dorothy Olesak, for who on her birthday, for whom this Mass is offered, may she be surrounded by God's love and experience many more happy years. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, may they come to experience the joys of God's heavenly kingdom with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God of hope, you sent your Son to be our light. Look with favor upon the needs we bring to you this day. We ask through Christ our Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in his sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we come, have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Number 910, take and eat. Number 910, take and eat, verse 5. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 687, Sing Praise to the Lord. Number 687, six, Sing Praise to the Lord, verse 4.